good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Lafayette Presbyterian Church. Whether you are a longtime member, whether you are a guest or a visitor, today in this place, no one outranks anyone else. We are all part of the worshiping family of God in Jesus Christ, and we rejoice in being together. Also, those who are watching through Drive Up Worship or those who are watching virtually, we embrace you as well. Remember that we are not bound by any limitations in Jesus Christ. So that family of faith can stretch even through virtual hugs. So also, please remember to text me any joys or concerns that you might have and we'll share them later in worship. My cell number is in your bulletin on the insert. Today is the final Sunday in Easter season, and you know how I love Easter season, don't we all? So if one more time I could say Christ is risen and you could with a resounding reply say Christ is risen indeed, it would just bless my heart. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Well, today is also Memorial Day Sunday. And I want to share these words offered by poet Joseph Rodman Drake. And they for and they who for their country die shall fill an honored grave. For glory lights the soldier's tomb, and beauty weeps the brave. We do remember those who have given their lives in service to our country. And I know that there are those who want to neatly divide all the holidays so that we don't cross any boundaries. But I'm not bound by their choices. I want to remember all of those also who have served, all those who are currently serving, and it's a special joy on this Sunday when we grieve, mourn, and remember to celebrate because we have one of which we are so proud. Kevin Lachat is here with Stefana, and we really want you to know that in our minds and hearts, you represent all the people we are thanking and remembering today. Thank you for being here. On Sunday, June 12th, now that's not next Sunday, it's the week afterwards. On Sunday, June 12th, we will celebrate Pentecost and Trinity Sundays with the Sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Please make a special effort to be here as we raise the cup and break the bread. On a decidedly lesser note, our son Chris has left some cuttings of Cuban oregano in the narthex for anyone that would like to take some cuttings home. <laughs> and I understand at this time that Marie Peacock and Rita Tucker have a Presbyterian Women presentation to offer. No, Marlene said it was Rita and Marie, and that's the way it shall be. <laughs> okay, Diane. Not me and Rita and Okay, well. This year's honoree for honorary life membership of the Presbyterian Women became a member of Lafayette in 1991. He has been active with the church's church throughout the years working with Vacation Bible School, Sunday School, and Scouts. She has served as a deacon and an elder and on the prophecy committee. 
She's been active for the Presbyterian women, serving as circle leader and on the coordinating team. She's volunteered at Dogwood Acres. She has Stephen ministry training and has used her training assisting and socializing with shut-ins and other church members, especially those who reside at Westminster Oaks Retirement Community. Most importantly, she consistently brings a calm patience, love, service, and Christian attitude to everything she does for the church and its members. Please welcome our honoree for night for 2022, Kayla Chair. Continue the worship of Almighty God. Let us call ourselves to worship. Praise the Lord. With all my heart, I will thank the Lord in his sanctuary. How wonderful are the things the Lord does. All he does is full of honor and majesty. His righteousness is eternal. Praise the Lord. Amen. In body or in spirit, let us stand for our hymn, Awesome God. short of your glory, we cling to your promises. We yearn for your grace and your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen.
most to extend to Fort Hunt. Pray for parents of Ashley and Roman Welch and grandparents Doug and Linda Phipps, <coughs> excuse me, as little Emery Welch had emergency appendix surgery Friday night. She's doing well as she recovers and Doug reported this morning that she is now happy that she doesn't have to eat jello anymore. <laughs> Pray for Garrett Brooks, who is here with us today. Garrett's waiting a heart procedure. Please keep him in your prayers. Pray for Scott Clements upon the passing of his wife, Amy, last week. Steve and Susie's daughter, Katie Gurner, is recovering well from COVID. And pray for Kim Grant and family as nine-year-old Chance is having challenging medical issues. Pray for Bonnie and Randy Garn's daughter, Audrey, who is facing neck and spine issues. And we continue to pray for the people and the situation in Ukraine. May peace prevail. And our hearts are broken over recent mass shootings, such as the recent tragedy in Texas. God bless the families of all involved, the school, the town, and our Thank you, Sandy. And in prayer requests, Faith Kinnear asks prayers for Patty's friend and fellow Action Club member Jen Jackson and his family on the passing of his brother Jimbo Jackson. And Molly Miller. Uh, says, uh, Steve, Bill, and I continue to pray for daughter Joy as she not so patiently waits for healing and test results. We feel her pain. God bless her. She continues to improve, but not quite fast enough. <laughs> but we do pray that not only will that healing come quickly, but will be complete and will be restorative. Let us come before God in prayer. Lord, on this Memorial Sunday, we do pause from our hectic paced lives, from all the real and imagined conflicts and chaos from self-centered desires and directions and instead we open our hearts to the blessing of your Holy Spirit as we contemplate and remember deeply the sacrifices that have been made for our freedoms, for our country, for our way of life. And it is sobering to remember that so many have given so much so many that we will never know. Those who served gallantly and valiantly, whose names will never be recorded by history. Those who were willing to put the ideals of our nation ahead of any internal strikes or challenges. Lord, I know that I speak for many when I confess 
that I am not worthy of the blessings I have received. And Lord, as I remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice on Memorial Day, my mind, heart, and spirit cannot help but even move past these to remember the one who died on the cross that my sins would be wiped away and that I might have the possibility not only of an abundant life but an everlasting life. I thank you, Lord, that I can start each new day fresh no matter how far I may have strayed from the path, no matter the choices I have made which I now regret, no matter the hurts I may have caused, no matter the strife I have caused even in my own life, you see only the best in me. You see all the potentials you created in me. You see all that I could be. And you love me as a precious child of God. I thank you that for each of us here today, we can make that faith confession. And that we can revel in the truth that even deepest darkness, even most profound griefs, and even those times when salvation seems far away, you are close at hand. That you will always embrace us and always seek to lead us to your kingdom. And for this, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, the author of our salvation, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Joyously, let us bring forth God's tithes and our offerings.
done all that is expected. God of compassion, embolden us to use our voices to speak on behalf of the voiceless, to use our ears to hear the discouraged and defeated, and to use our arms to help the weak and powerless. In the name of the one who conquered death, amen. You may be seated. Our scripture reading this morning is John 5, verses 1 through 9. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, in Jerusalem, at the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called, in Hebrew, Beth Zach, Zach, Beth Zach <laughs> which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. This is the word of the Lord. grateful today. What a wonderful trio we enjoyed. And I do thank Sandy, uh, my liturgist for this month. She didn't realize when the assignments were handed out that she got a five Sunday month. <laughs> but thank you for your gracious service. And I am deeply touched that this is Memorial Sunday. Let us pray. Lord, we ask that the scriptures today would be written on our hearts, that we might find their place in our lives. Amen. A doubtful blessing. A doubtful blessing. That's how the pulpit commentary describes this healing. How can that be? Well, remember, Jesus approaches this paralytic who has waited 38 years to be healed and asks him, do you want to be healed? What a question. Of course he wants to be healed, doesn't he? But if he accepts the Lord's healing, his whole world will change dramatically. You see, right now, he has people who help him, who feed him. His begging is successful. He has a place in the pecking order around the pool. Not only will he have new responsibilities to work to support himself, he'll have to give up the narrative the identity he has forged for himself. Can he let go? Can he move forward? As I have pondered Memorial Day and remembrance, the lessons of this healing and of this paralytic have led me 
to a very different sermon than I intended to preach, or perhaps the sermon I should be preaching. But I can't shake this question. Is remembering or memorializing, in fact, a doubtful blessing? Now, I know what you may be thinking. Without hesitation, I cherish and honor the memory of those who died that I might live and live in freedom. And I know the quote that many of you might offer me in response from George Santayana. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And I do believe that. And I agree with Ellie Vassell. I even printed it in the bulletin that without memory, there is no culture. Without memory, there would be no civilization, no society, no future. I agree. I believe this. But I also think of Belfast, Northern Ireland, where even today you can feel the tension walking through neighborhoods. And God forbid you walk into a pub wearing the wrong colors. You can't go 50 feet without a memorial to some real or imagined atrocity, no matter which neighborhood you're in. They can't forget. They can't let go. A doubtful blessing, indeed. And what about the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Well, as with many international conflicts, there is a multitude of factors that contributed to this conflict. But it, uh, it is at least in part about reclaiming the past glories of Mother Russia. Now, forget for a moment that Mother Russia hasn't been glorious and powerful since about 1910. And the average age of a Russian is 40 years old. So there's nobody alive that even remembers those glories. Well, in fact, they do. Because there is a narrative, an identity that says, that's who we are. And by God, we're going to grab it again. In the Middle East, Israel and Palestine are so determined to remember every last transgression, even back thousands of years, that no peacemaker can easily appeal to compromise or cooperation. And lest you think that we are an exception, many of the challenges we face in our country today have their roots up to and including the Civil War. Remembering is sometimes a doubtful blessing. So, when is it appropriate to embrace the past? And when is it better to forget? When do we hold them? And when should we fold them? When should we cling to the narratives we've created for ourselves? And when should we sing a new song? 
to the Lord. In trying to respond to this question, I have been troubled. But I do have a starting point, courtesy of Susie, from a discussion I had with her concerning this message. She reminded me of Isaiah 43, 25. When God declared, I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my sake, and I will not remember your sins. You see, even for God, forgiving the unforgivable and a determination to love the unlovable is a gift we give ourselves, regardless of what it means for others. Love and forgiveness is a blessing for what it means in our lives. But also, if you notice, God freely concedes that letting go of the sins of others takes an act of will, a determined decision. Forgetting the sins in our own families, in our church, in our country, or those sins of other nations means letting go of vitriol, of anger, of vengeance. Forgetting transgressions means letting go of any self-identity or any narrative which may hold us back. And I will strive to let go of all of these. And I encourage us all to do the same. But God's decision to love us and forgive us through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, even when we are obviously undeserving, should inspire us. First, to give thanks for our great nation and all that it offers. Second, to be grateful for the beautiful blessings in our lives, many of which we did not earn. And finally, to remember with reverence and respect the selfless sacrifices and the ultimate, ultimate sacrifices made for you and for me. Now, I know I haven't completely or even adequately answered my own question. But I do believe that compassion, forgiveness, and a willingness to forget can transform our relationships, heal us, and bring us closer together. And therefore, we will never allow remembrance to become a doubtful blessing. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for challenging us and inspiring us to remember with thanksgiving and to forget angers and vengeance. In Jesus' name we pray. In body or in spirit, please stand with me as we offer our hymn of parting, God of the Age.
I charge us to follow the leading of our God in forgetting angers, hurts, betrayals, and vengeance, but remembering with reverence, respect, and thanksgiving. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this hour and forever. Amen. You may be seated that the ushers might dismiss us by rote.